everybody within a marketing department and in a whole organization benefits from this. I'm, mm -hmm. When I first started using it, I was a content marketer. And so those are sort of the people that are near and dear to my heart. And what they get out of it is just being insulated from all of those, hey, could you just do this email for me? Hey, could you just take a look at this ebook? Um, and actually get to focus in on, on really excellent creative work because you're insulated from those external interruptions more effectively on an Agile team. Mm -hmm. And then going one step up above sort of the creative in the trenches people, managers actually get freed up from having to spend all day trying to plan in this volatile environment and they can actually start figuring out strategic roadmaps and mm -hmm. and what the company actually needs to be doing instead of putting out fires all day long. Welcome to the Schweiki Media Expert webinar series where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello everyone. I'm here today with Andrea Fryer and as an early convert to the ways of agile marketing, Andrea loves Nothing more than seeing a, tea, a team evolve from chaos to high performance. In addition to being trained as a scrum master and product owner, Andrea is a certified professional in agile coaching and a certified agile leader. She, ser she shares her findings and her failures regularly from stages around the world as an international speaker on all things ag agile marketing. Andrea is a content marketer by trade and functions best when she's writing regularly. Her most recent book, Death of a Marketer, chronicles marketing's troubled past and charts a course to a more agile future for the profession. And of course, you can find her articles on the Agile Sherpas blog. And today, we are going to talk about nothing else than agile marketing, tips and best practices for maximum results. Andrea, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm very excited to geek out with you for the next hour. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think we're talking about your most famous uh, or your most favorite topic and one that you have uh, really gotten out there into the marketplace. If I'm not mistaken, you are you know, pretty much the leader in spreading the word of agile marketing, um, at least as far as early adoption goes, I didn't see anybody else. So I think we have the very best person potentially in the country talking about agile marketing. So very, very excited. But before we dig in and pull out all your tips and best practices here, go ahead and explain what agile marketing is in your words. Okay, uh, that's a really good place to start. So it's important to keep in mind that agile isn't just about doing the same stuff faster. It's mm -hmm. really a system for continuously improving a process, and we do that by applying Agile principles like audience focus and collaboration. We do that over a long period of time, and then as we go along, we examine the results that we're getting and make adjustments. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really about that, that continuous release, quick iteration, experimentation. It's a mindset, not mm -hmm. so but just we're trying to do everything faster. Understood. Now, is this different than like a scrum approach or does Agile use a scrum process? Yeah. So and I guess we should define what Scrum is as well. Yeah. Yeah. Most people are familiar with that one. Um, mm -hmm. So Agile is like the umbrella term and then Scrum is sort of a subset of practices underneath that Agile umbrella. And mm -hmm. it is the one that most people are familiar with, but it's not the only way to be Agile. So mm -hmm. there's other systems like Lean, Kanban, and mm -hmm. then even we can combine those um, into one called Scrumbon. There's lots of different ways to actually put this stuff into practice. Gotcha. So Agile is the mindset, as you mentioned. And then within that, you use approaches that people normally commonly know as Scrum, where you know, the fast iterations, you know, the sprints, you look, adjust, and go, okay, gotcha. Now, in your opinion, I mean, this might be somewhat of logical, but um, maybe not. Well, why do you think agile marketing came about and is gaining in popularity so much right now? I think a lot of it is that marketing has just become such a digital profession, and mm -hmm. we can't keep using these old-school analog management approaches and expect mm -hmm. it to work out. Uh, we we have to market in an increasingly digital world and in a world where people expect us to keep up with this amazing pace of innovation that's going on all around us. 
Mm-hmm. And when we try to do like a year long annual marketing plan and stick to it, no matter what, huh. it just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't jive. Yeah. And things might change in the marketing landscape within that year. I mean, it's most likely going to happen. You know, yeah. I mean, the odds are in your favor of something changes in 12 months versus it not. Uh, and so in your opinion, I mean, not in your opinion, but in your experience, what have you seen? Like what benefits have you seen when somebody, you know, speak up some specific benefits if you can about what you've seen other companies get from, you know, going with an agile mindset? Yeah, it it really is everybody within a marketing department and in a whole organization benefits from this. I'm mm-hmm. when I first started using it, I was a content marketer and so those are sort of the people that are near and dear to my heart and what they get out of it is just being insulated from all of those, hey, could you just do this email for me? Hey, could you just take a look at this ebook? Um, and actually get to focus in on, on really excellent creative work because you're insulated from those external interruptions more effectively on an agile team. Mm-hmm. And then going one step up above sort of the creative in the trenches people, managers actually get freed up from having to spend all day trying to plan in this volatile environment, and they can actually start figuring out strategic roadmaps and mm-hmm. and what the company actually needs to be doing instead of putting out fires all day long. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you go up a level from there, happy marketers who are strategically focused deliver better outcomes for a business. It's just sort of, you know, builds the success of one level builds up and up and up until you're getting really outstanding results for the bottom line of a company. Gotcha. So I can appreciate the CEO, the CMO, and all the way down to the newest intern working within that marketing department loving what you're teaching them (laughs) because it seems like it's from the bottom to the top. Everybody benefits from it, Uh, not only the bottom line, but, you know, the people who are working within the system. So you sold me um, on wanting to go this direction. Would like for you to now help show people or tell people, how the next few the next first steps of getting the ball rolling here can can you walk us through that and then maybe take us through the sequence of setting people up to become agile yeah i mean there's sometimes a misperception that you have to do some sort of big massive change right burn the whole structure to the ground and start all over mm-hmm. but you can really take kind of an incremental approach okay be, be agile about going agile break it up into manageable pieces and then take them one by one. So some of the easiest places to start are just build a backlog, which is like the prioritized to-do list that the team can draw from and get that going really well. Get everybody used to having a conversation about, okay, what's actually the most important thing that marketing should Mm -hmm. be doing next? That goes at the top of the Mm -hmm. backlog. Do we have all the information that we need to start working on that? And then you go down the list until you have, you know, a dozen, 20 different projects in there that the team could start working on. And then we get the backlog going. Everyone's comfortable with it. And then we can start visualizing the workflow. So when we take a piece of work out of the backlog, what really happens to it? Who works on it first? Who works on it next? How many rounds of review does it have to go through? And that whole process can be visualized on a board. Usually we call it a Kanban board. People have probably seen something like it. Uh, Trello is mm-hmm. really straightforward use of that yep. kind of system. So we and then do. once we get it all out in the open, it's really easy to see where are things getting stuck? Where is our system breaking down? What can we do to make it better? Mm-hmm. And the easiest way to figure those kind of things out is to have a daily meeting, the daily stand-up meeting, where we all get together and talk about how things are going, what could we be doing better, and then pause every couple of weeks to really dig in for an hour or so, dig into process in a retrospective meeting and say, all right, in the next two weeks, what changes can we make to our backlog, to our workflow, to try to make things work just a little bit better? And those are kind of three pretty quick steps that people can take, and it's not a lot of upfront change. There's not a lot of painful adjustment that you have to make, but it can get you sort of thinking in a different way, get your feet wet, and then you can start deciding, okay, is this working? Do we want to get really committed to Scrum, or do we want to really commit to Kanban and try some more of the logistical things that are really specific to those methodologies if we're feeling good about where we're at with the basics? 
Now, very cool. Now, this, these meetings, I'm sure some people are listening and wondering, okay, that sounds great. And you also have heard, you know, meetings can be a killer of a company when they overdo it, the, either the length or the frequency or, or whatnot. So can you walk us through the structure of these meetings? I'm sure you've worked with companies to keep that as efficient as possible and yeah. potentially the length of the meeting. So like, okay, here we are. We're going to do this, 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 and this, and here's the length because obviously to be agile, you can't be deliberating all day. Right. Absolutely. You don't want to, especially because everyone in the whole team is in these meetings, so you can easily eat up people's time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the daily stand-up meeting is not supposed to last longer than 15 minutes. Okay. And the way that we get through that um, is, well, so a, a traditional stand-up is answering three questions. Everyone on the team goes around and says, what did I do yesterday? What am I planning to do today? And what are the impediments? What's standing in my way it's keeping me from moving forward? Awesome. Uh, the, pro the problem with those meetings, is, especially on marketing teams, is that if I'm a content marketer, I don't really care so much about what some of the other people on the team might be doing. It's not directly affecting me, and so I tune out. I stop listening to other people, which is too bad because there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration that get missed. So what I sometimes recommend people doing is just focusing on the board, focusing on the workflow visualization, like what's actually, sorry, my computer's beeping at me, what's actually going on uh, with the work. So what got done since yesterday, what do we have new information about, or what's blocking us from finishing a project. Mm -hmm. And then we can do that during the stand-up meeting instead of having each person do an update, and especially if you have a big team, right? Mm -hmm. If you have 15 people, you can't have them all giving an update and keeping it under 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, with Agile, it's looking and adjusting, you know, on the fly. As far as, like, attribution goes and seeing what's moving the needle where and what it's doing, what – you know, what do you look for? What's most optimal to look for on a daily, if it, if there is a daily look at metrics um, or weekly or monthly? What do you all, and I know this might not be the same for every single company, but can you give me some generalities here of, you know, how often you're looking at these metrics, what you're looking for, what you're using to make your next best decision? Yeah, so metrics definitely do matter, and each of the different Agile systems kind of has their own Agile metrics that you can look at to see how the process is going. Mm -hmm. uh, those, would, those would happen more um, at the end of an iteration or at the end of a set amount of time. So maybe every two weeks we stop and say, did we actually get more work done in the last two weeks? Uh, if, if so, how can we do even better? And if not, what's going on that sort of held us back from a more traditional like marketing metrics kind of standpoint, you're right. It depends on what the team is working on, but it should certainly sort of be baked in to the process. We need to know what success looks like mm -hmm. for every single project so that we know, did we achieve that? And if not, why? And maybe that's because it was a failure, right? We learned that this new channel that we just experimented with was not a good idea. And now we can move on quickly. We had, we learned that lesson in a couple of weeks as opposed to this huge, you know, quarter-long campaign that we dumped half our budget into. And then we learned that really painful lesson after a long time. So Yeah, so it's interesting. With Agile, it almost seems like more of a management mindset than a marketing ma mindset. I, I know it's probably a morph between the two, but you're analyzing what people are getting done, which – as you know, the happiness and the productivity of your employees in your market, you know, every employee is what's going to basically set a company apart. I guess you could have a once in a million idea, but in general, a lot of people are, are selling the same sorts of things. So am I hearing this right, that, you know, agile is a big part of this is like a man, like a managerial or, you know, that sort of benefit from it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, it got started in IT and software and mm -hmm. has been applied to project management more broadly, and mm -hmm. marketers are sort of starting to take it on and make it their own. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's why that's why I love it, because it works in just about any context. It's not mm -hmm. specific to, you know, this only works for 
inbound marketing and nothing else. It, it can yeah. be for, for any kind of, of, really any kind of knowledge work that you're doing. It helps you just get it done at a higher level of quality and get more done in the same amount of time. Well, yeah, I mean, that sounds fantastic. Uh, that, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, what you're saying, you know, for, especially for medium to large organizations, I mean, you're talking about potentially saving tens and hundreds of thousands of man hours, uh, not to mention being, you know, more productive in what that means on the, the bottom line, the back end. You know, you're actually getting better stuff and you're getting more. Yeah. No, I love what you're saying. And, and I, I didn't look at agile marketing in that way. Uh, until right now, but I, I definitely see where you're coming from, and and you know we use Trello here, and I guess we're sort of doing agile marketing without knowing it because, uh, you know, we noticed a long time ago this could get out of hand, you know, all the things that we need to do, so we need to organize this and assign and track and see what's getting done, and then managing the hours and where's the roadblocks, all of that stuff, and. Um, yeah, I can just say from personal experience, it makes me sleep at night, you know, because there's just so much going on. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Now, but getting back to the analytical side on the traditional marketing stuff, uh, just out of curiosity, and again, I know this um, will apply differently if you're looking to get, if you're, you know, selling strictly online orders or if you're trying to build an audience or if you're looking to get email news subscribers, which I guess goes with the audience deal. I understand there's different, but do you have any hidden gem places you have found amazing info that helps with making your next best decision? Have you, is there anything you've discovered like, oh man, this is a place that you need to look uh, if for most businesses to see if you're moving the needle at all? Any, any particular item that you pay attention to or you've noticed some other companies pay attention to? You know, I think a lot of it can come back to, to what's going on on your website. Like, that's usually a good place to learn a lot of stuff. That's one of my favorite agile experiments that I've run is we looked at the organic uh, traffic for a website, and we saw a bunch of people were coming and looking for examples of how to use the software that we were working with, but we didn't have any content around that. They were sort of, you know, how people are. They're pretty good at, at finding something, but it mm -hmm. wasn't tailored to those needs and to those um, searches. And mm -hmm. so we started experimenting, right? We did one iteration where we really dug into the traffic and what were the exact terms people were looking at. And then the next iteration, we started building out uh, small pieces of content for the different examples that we had come up with. And then we looked at to see which one was actually getting the most traffic. Where were people, where were people going? And then the mm -hmm. ones we were doing well, we expanded them out. We made templates within the software that people could just one-click install into their account. And we ended up generating thousands of new trials of the software, tens of thousands of page views, all because we could do this rapid experiment. We got all of this done within just a couple of months. Whereas beforehand, you know, you'd have to do all this upfront research and lay out the whole plan and design the new web page where it's going to go and mm -hmm. create all the content before you would release any of it. But instead, we did all these little steps and ended up getting this big result. Awesome. And, that, and that's the whole thing is you get your initial plan, which you feel is going to work best. But you don't just set up the 12 months. You get going with it and you analyze and see, you know, go to your... Obviously, uh, you need to learn, you know, some metric finding, and, and I'll say Andy Crestovina has put out tons of great information on how to utilize Google Analytics and how to see where people are, you know, what pages they are coming to. So just Google him and Google, Google, Google Analytics, and you'll learn a lot about it there. But so that's the whole idea is to do that, analyze, and go. So um, I am following you very well here, and, and I assume others as well. Now let's go to mistakes. Um, what, what, where do you see people, you know, mess this up? Where do, where do you see people just go awry? Uh, you know, various, I guess not just the main common mistake, but you know, where do you see multiple ways that people start to kind of go off course? That you're like, no, 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 don't stop doing that. This is what you need to do. Can you speak to that at all? Oh yes, uh, there's there's a couple. Um, so one of the main ones is thinking that Scrum is people's only alternative. Uh, it is the most popular and certainly the one to get information about most easily, but it, especially if you do it too strictly, if you try to just apply it without making any adjustments, 
it can cause a lot more problems than it solves because it was made to work under a very specific set of circumstances which marketing teams don't often enjoy, like having a totally cross-functional team or no more than nine and no less than five people on a team. Sometimes that just doesn't happen. And mm -hmm. if you try to, to shoehorn a marketing team into Scrum, they, they break it. Um, Mm -hmm. And this, this happens a lot when you have an IP team that's using Scrum, and they're like, oh, well, we'll teach you how we do Agile, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. And everyone comes at it with the best of intentions, but things can get messy. Um, I've worked with a couple of teams this year that are were in that, that struggling mode, and then as soon as I said, well, you don't have to do this exactly that way, it was like, oh, well, this is so much better all of a sudden. So yeah. just having that freedom to experiment. Okay, awesome. Um, any other uh, examples or reasons that you've seen people not be successful here with Agile? Yeah, if, if they have too many handoffs, if their team relies on creative services or we have to send everything off to an agency before we can finish it, uh, then things can stall out. The more that we can create really cross-functional teams that have all the skills necessary to finish a project, it doesn't always mean that every single person on the team has every single skill. Sure. As a unit, you know, we can do the work that we need to do. Yeah, I understand that big time, and I've constantly preached to anybody who wants to get into the writing field, and I'm like, learn SEO, you know, learn content marketing, learn what you're doing, because you can't just write without a focus. Um, what other skill sets uh, do you see that are easily morphed into one human being. You know, I know it's going to be hard for somebody to have graphics and writing skills and strategy and salesmanship and all of it into one. But uh, what's realistic that you've seen, like some skill sets that are being morphed together, like I mentioned writers and SEO. Um, what else do you see has been helpful to, you know, and reasonable to look for in one person? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, also things like you know, social media and email. You know, it's really mm -hmm. all different ways to, to communicate with an audience. It's just different channels and different styles. And so those can be good areas to overlap. And a lot of times it's just a matter of what people are interested in. You know, if if you're a writer who has always kind of had an analytical side, like dig into the dig into the metrics and become responsible for some of the reporting if that's mm -hmm. you know what you want to do. Um just the more the more you can cross train people, and at, at some level, it doesn't matter too much what the cross training is, as long as it's happening. Gotcha. So for, for all listeners out there, if you're wanting to get into writing, or if you're into graphic design and you want to go that direction, understand that the world has changed. It's not changing anymore. I mean, it is continuing to change, but it's changed. The market landscape has changed, and it is expected to have multiple cross-functional abilities. Of course, you don't need to know everything, as Andrew mentioned, and it just logic dictates, but you do need to start morphing some of these things together because it is people are moving the agile direction, and, you know, whether they know it or not. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the world's changing, and you've got to morph these skill sets. Uh, and a lot of them are very logically connected, but you have to do it. You can't just say, I want to write, or I want to graphic design. I mean, maybe but you're going to be a lot more valuable to yourself and to others if uh, you combine these skill sets, which, again, it's very reasonable to, to do as long as you put in the effort. Um, all right, on the flip side here, Andrew, what common elements do you see the most successful agile mar marketers share? In, any specific patterns or behaviors or anything that you see within them? Yeah, there's usually a very clear pattern of what's happening above the marketing team. So at the at the executive level, you really need support and buy-in there, especially when it comes time for um, one of their executive colleagues to jump in and say, hey, marketing, I have this great idea that you should execute right now and stop everything else that you're doing. <laughs> you really need to have somebody who's going to say, hang on, like it goes in the backlog and they're going to get to it when it's, it's the top priority, but you can't come in and derail just because you had a great idea. And having someone who will step in and really, like, step up uh, is, is really key to, to making this work in the long term. Understood. So basically, you have a really good and honorable manager who's heading everything up that's able to tell yeah. the top-level uh, top, top brass thing, no, 
this is what we're doing. So, um, yeah, great point. Now, as far as roadblocks and for people trying to get going with Agile, what have you seen? And then not just the roadblock, how have you seen people deal with that? I, I constantly am reading about and hearing about and seeing about, you know, and even going to like content marketing world, you hear about it's, there's issues with pushing things through to the top sea level areas. I assume Agile also suffers that. Um, how have you seen people explain this or do it or present it in a certain way to get to push this through to the to the like I said the top level of uh, brass head companies? My favorite way that I've seen people do it is just by running a really straightforward pilot. So it's it's a low risk experiment. We're going to do either within a set time period. We're going to do you know this project that we've already planned that's coming up for the next six weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to commit to doing that in a more agile way and see what happens. Or you can pull four or five people out of the department who are really excited about it and say, all right, you guys are now like our pilot agile team. Go mm -hmm. out and work on, work on demand gen or work on content marketing or work on some sort of, you know, subset of what marketing is responsible for using an agile approach, figure out what's going on and sort of report back. And it's a much, less risky thing than sitting a whole department down in a room and saying, all right, we're agile now. Everybody get on board and figure it out. Yeah. That's a much harder sell than we're going to, we're going to take these five people for a couple of weeks and do some quick learning. That's, that's a little bit easier of a conversation to have. Understood. So let them have a bite and then get your, you know, get your foot in the door and then go we, go from there. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Now, how, how does a company know if Agile is right for them? I know you're a huge proponent of Agile marketing, but is there like a, a certain threshold that you've seen it makes sense for people to strongly, strongly start to consider looking into this deeper? Or is this just for, in your opinion, no, this is for everybody? <laughs> or do you feel like there is that kind of, you know, I'm noticing companies in and around this size are who really start to greatly benefit from this approach? Yeah, I mean, I think that it does work for everybody. It's just a matter of finding the right flavor. You know, if you're a small team, a small organization, Kanban may be the best first step for you. Um, big enterprise size organizations tend to like the structure of Scrum. They like the scheduling. They like the defined roles. But um, I've really been surprised this year how many enterprise size teams are are jumping into this. And it's just because I think that they have the most to gain. Mm -hmm. There's so many inefficiencies that they have to deal with in their process that the the cycles of innovation that are happening around them are really leaving them in the dust and they're getting really scared about it. And um, this is this is like a way for them to catch back up really, really quickly. So, um, I mean, I've been working with teams that are you know, 40, 60 people, and they are, they're in, you know, they're committed and, and ready to change, um, which kind of surprises me that teams of that size are, are so ready to go, because it's, it's easier to do the smaller, you know, 10 to 12 people, mm -hmm. make, that, make that transition a lot more quickly, and the bigger teams take longer, but like I said, I think that the, the gains can be bigger. When you have so many, so many inefficiencies hanging out. No, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, the greater opportunity, and you mentioned that you're surprised by it, but everything that we've talked about, I'd be surprised if the bigger organizations were the ones who weren't adopting this because they do have so much to gain with all the inefficiencies and not to mention the back-end opportunity by doing things better. They'll, they'll have, you know, they're set to gain more. So um, that, it makes complete sense to me and, you know, that, that's why that would be happening. So, um, you know, being efficient is just so vital, and the bigger you get, the more of a bigger deal it is. Now, um, what about, you mentioned a couple tools. What are some things in your tool belt? Say you were going into a company that says, all right, blank check, Andrea, uh, we want to get going. We've been following you, love what you say, seen examples. We want to do this set us up for success and you had carp launch on coming in with the exact tools to, to utilize in your opinion, what, what would those be? You know, uh, it would probably be a whole lot of sticky notes first off. <laughs> <laughs> Cause 
because really it's the easiest place to start is get a big wall and a whole bunch of sticky notes and and map things out and get comfortable with it okay. and then transition over to some sort of digital tool. Um, otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time setting things up the wrong way and then have mm -hmm. to go back and redo it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get comfortable with, with your visualization. What's it going to look like? What's the handoff look like from one team to the other? Mm -hmm. Who needs access to the board? Who needs to just look at the board and not be allowed to put any stories in the backlog because they're messing things up? Like, you can you can figure all that out in a really quick and, and low-tech way and then move over to a tool. And mm -hmm. some teams aren't ever going to need to go past Trello, something free and really lightweight. And Trello actually has a whole bunch of power-ups, I think is what they call them, for like doing epics and doing burn down charts and really getting some of that traditional agile tracking in there. But mm -hmm. then you can, you can go a step up from there. There's actually a lot of tools that are trying to cater more to agile marketing teams. Uh, there's Rike and Workfront. There's um, one called Rave Tree, which is really good for agencies. Kanbanize is a nice one if you're looking for uh, a more straightforward Kanban implementation. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. And mm -hmm. even a year ago, it would have been a lot harder to find so many options. But there's, regardless of what you want to spend or how much time you want to devote to your tool, there's there's probably something out there that will hit you right where you want to be. Gotcha. Now, as far as the attribution goes, is it maybe Google Analytics that you've seen work? Because, I'm, you know, again, I'm thinking you're going to want to find out what's pushing, you know, what's moving the needle where, right? Yeah. Is there any specific attribution softwares that, that you really like, or do you mainly utilize Google Analytics or – uh, in that realm, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think you've got to you've got to go a little bit, unless you're looking purely at you know organic traffic and things like that from Google Analytics, and you can do a lot with their goals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're trying to get more through the whole customer life cycle from prospect all the way through to advocacy, then mm -hmm. some sort of of CRM or automation system is is probably going to be what you need, just so you can track. And when you're starting to do experiments in email and experiments within social media, Google Analytics is obviously not going to give you mm -hmm. clues about what's working there and what's not. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I assume you, you know, you can Google attribution softwares if you, you know, if you're a higher level, you know, you have a bigger budget. You might have to start with Google Analytics if you're lower and you want the free tools, but um, yeah, you can just Google. There's lots of tools out there, but you need to know what's happening so you can make these decisions. Um, all right, looking into the future, where do you see agile marketing in 2018 and 2019 and, and, and so on? I think that there's going to be a lot more demand for people who have experience already working in an agile environment. I've seen already job posting asking for Agile experience in marketers. So people wow. people want people who have changed their mindset, who have adopted this way of, of looking at their work, who are ready to experiment, ready to iterate, don't get attached to these major projects that take a year to complete. This is starting to become people just want to build it into their their company's DNA. You mm -hmm. used to have, you know, CMOs would sort of take it with them as they moved from company to company. I'm the Agile CMO, and I'm going to, you know, introduce it to my new company. But now I think it's coming from the bottom up a lot more. Mm hmm And I think you have a big uh, part in that. So uh, if anybody's out there wanting to be highly, highly valuable in the future, Start learning from Andrea. <laughs> Start learning from her on all this stuff because if people literally are putting that in job descriptions right now, Andrea, that uh, I'm telling you, you definitely had something to do with that. And uh, that's – uh, I'm surprised to hear that. You know, I, agile marketing to me is a fairly new term, and the fact that people are already picking it up and looking for that and defining it that way, um, it, it is a big deal for the for the future of people who are wanting to get into higher-level marketing. Well, awesome. Um any any parting thoughts before I have to let you go? You know, I, I think that you're right. This is still 
an emerging field, um, but there are a lot of people out there who are trying to latch on to it. So I would say uh, if you're looking to learn and looking for um, people to teach you, be critical of where you go. Uh, there are lots of blog posts out there spreading unfortunate information that is not accurate. So uh, I think we're all pretty good at being critical about our news sources now, and we should apply that to all the content that we consume online. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and speaking of people to learn from, Andrea, how can people continue to learn from you? Yeah. Uh, AgileSherpas.com is my website. We have an online course there that people can take. It's about an 80-minute course that you can take online. Uh, we do in-person workshops, public ones, as well as private ones that we offer to people, you know, in their, in their companies. And tons of free resources there, too. I write all the time, post my slides from my speaking engagements. So you should be able to hopefully find some guidance there. Or... Always, I'm Andrea at AgileSherpas.com. I would love to hear from people with questions via email. Awesome. And just for the listeners out there, it's Agile Sherpas. It's A-G-I-L-E-S-H-E-R-P-A-S.com. And Andrea Fryer on Twitter is at A-N-D-R-E-A-F-R-Y-R-E-A-R. All right, Andrea. Hey, this was a lot of fun and very educational. I really uh, appreciate your time. And uh until next time. Thank you so much.